Okay, so you can see I've added a little bit of uh, graphic enhancement here just to make sure that this reads a little bit more clearly. Just turn on some shadows. And uh, we'll just kind of review where we left off in the last video. So you can see here that I've got the nice smooth transition here between the landing and the bottom. I do have to add a little bit of extra extension over here to the uh, left side, but I'll get to that later. And I've got the transition here that takes me from the stairs to the second floor landing, and then from the landing to the third floor uh, flight of stairs. So uh, next step is to get to the railings. And uh, I want to do a few different things here. I want to change the type so that it's no longer this horizontal pipe rail system. Uh, I want to change that to be a wall mounted system. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the extension on this right side so that I get a little bit of extra length at the top and a little bit more length at the bottom. And then what I want to do is I set up a condition where the inside handrail is going to wrap properly around this wall in such a way that it meets up with the handrail on this side so that I get that nice clean condition that just repeats and makes it easy for me to copy additional instances up to additional floors. So the way that this begins is I'm just going to use this kind of default uh, rail system that Revit gave me, the horizontal rail. I'm going to click on it, select edit type, and then I'm going to make a duplicate and just call this a wall mounted rail. And now that I've created the new type, I'm going to get rid of a lot of extra geometry here. So I'm going to start up top here with rail structure. And I'm going to dump all these rails. So I'm going to start down at six and click delete and just keep, keep clicking delete right till I get to the top. And now that I've gotten rid of all those, I can click OK. And then I'm going to drop down to baluster placement and click on edit again and basically do the same thing. At the top here under the main pattern for the railing, uh, I've got a baluster and I just want to click none here so that there's nothing there. And then down below, I'm going to do the same thing. So all three of these, the corner posts, uh, in the intermediate posts, I'm just going to change those to a setting of none. And now that I've done that, the last thing I have to do here is just click on this check mark so that it doesn't use a top rail, which sounds a little counterintuitive, but you'll see the result in just a second here. Um, <clears throat> actually, one more thing I have to do is under handrail one, where it says type, I'm just going to switch this to the new type, which is the uh, wall mounted, so pipe wall mount, I'll click OK. And now that I've done that, I'm going to change the position here where it says none to left, and then I'll click OK. So there's the result, that's what I want. You can see that I've just got not only the rail wall mounted, but I've got these little posts here connecting it to the wall. A little tweak that I'm going to make here before I move on to the other side is I'm just going to click on my view cube so that I can get a bit more of a sort of orthogonal orientation. And you'll see here when I zoom in that the, the handrail is actually offset from the wall a little bit. Easy to fix that. I just click on the rail. And then in the instance properties over here, I can just change 25.4 to 0. And you'll see that it slides it over to the left. So that one for the moment is done. Uh, we're going to come back and make some further modifications so that it does wrap around the wall like we said. But for now, we're going to work on this rail and add some extensions to it. So I'll click on the rail. And the first step, of course, is just to change the type. Now that we've done all the work on the one on the left, we can just click on the type here and change this to our wall mounted rail. And you'll see it now looks the same. Same little tweak is necessary here where we just eliminate the offset so that it's right up against the wall. So now that we've got that property placed in relation to the wall, what we're going to do is fix the condition here. Uh, with regards to the extension. Now you can see that there's an extension at the top already and this actually happens to correspond to this dimension here which is the kind of one complete tread at the top. So it's at 280 millimeters. Uh, my local codes require an additional 20 millimeters to that so I'm going to add just a little bit of extension at the top and then down at the bottom uh, I also need a further extension. This has to be 300 millimeters from this point. So it's pretty easy to do this. All we have to do is just click on the rail and use this edit path tool. And then what I'm going to do is go to my second floor view. And as I said, I'm just going to add a little tiny extension here of 20 millimeters to the top. So I'll rely on my temporary dimensions just till I see, there we go, 20 millimeters. And then down at the bottom, I'm going to add 300. So I'll just rely again on temporary dimensions here until I see 300. And that's it. I'll click on the green check. And now you can see when I go to my 3D view that I've extended that a little bit, although that's nothing that we can necessarily tell 
at a glance, and then down here I've added that uh, crucial extra element. Just means that somebody that's ascending or descending the stairs can get their hand on that rail before they actually uh, hit the stairs. So with both rails now extending from level one to level two done, we're going to set ourselves up to do this transition, this little loop along the inside wall. Uh, before we do that, of course, we have to just make the changes here to these two handrails. So we'll repeat the process. Uh, we're going to start with the outside and we're going to change the type here to wall mounted. And then we'll edit the path and just quickly go up to our third floor and add those extensions. Remember, we want 300 millimeters at the bottom. And then we want this just the extra 20 millimeters at the top. And we just punch those in so that we've got good accuracy there. Click on the green check and we'll go back to a 3D view just to make sure that that looks OK. And then we'll repeat the process here for this one and we'll change it to a wall mounted rail once again and we're getting ready for the situation now where we'll eventually be able to copy this and have a nice continuous loop around that edge uh, in order to set ourselves ourselves up for that what we have to do is we have to create a condition now where this rail on the right has a little bit of a flat extension if we don't do that we're going to have it end abruptly with this kind of diagonal cut and it won't blend perfectly smooth with the uh, rail that's coming around the corner here We'll get to that in a second and just initially uh, make the changes here to this rail. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on edit path and then we're going to go to the second floor level. And we're going to see here that we've got the end of that sketch line and to it, we're going to click on our little line tool here once again and add 10 millimeters. So I'm just going to type in 10 and then we're going to click here again to make another extension. This one's going to extend all the way across the width of the wall, so the 200 millimeters. And then uh, when we get to that point, it should snap there pretty reliably. We're going to click here once again. And rather than coming back the full 10 millimeters, we're actually just going to go back nine. And so now that I've done that, I'm going to click on the green check and we're going to just going to go to the 3D view so we can kind of see why this condition is needed. Uh, oh yeah, we see another uh, little fix that I've got to make here. I forgot to make the little change to the offset, so we'll do that first, and then we'll talk about the situation that we've got here, this uh, rough, abrupt transition between the two rails. So I'll just click on the inside rail, and then of course, like I did before, I'll just click on offset, set that to zero, and then I'll do the same thing here on the right side, change the offset to zero, and that'll set it up flush against the wall. So as I said, if we zoom in here now, we'll see we're close, but not quite flush, because the cut has been made on this rail, when it's in a diagonal sort of descending position or descending state. And that's why we get this extra sort of diameter here. To fix that, all we have to do is just click on the descending rail, edit its path, which we can do in the second floor view. And we just have to add an extra little one millimeter extension. So remember, we deliberately made that a nine millimeter return, leaving that one millimeter gap. Now all we have to do is just add that extra little bit, click on the green check. And then when we go back, we'll see now that we've filled in that gap. So that blue highlight indicates the ascending rail as it loops around the wall. This is the descending rail. Now it meets up perfectly right where we want it to. So with all of that done, we're just going to make one last little tweak and basically repeat that same process for this rail up top. We want to have it wrap around the wall with first the 10 millimeter extension and then coming back with the one millimeter extension. And then to wrap this all up, we're just going to make the same modification down here to this rail that's coming from the, the first level. So just little sort of repeating tweaks here to the handrail. And once we've got this all set up for levels from one to three, and we're in a condition where we can just copy this up to all the subsequent levels and get the same sort of repeating pattern. So we'll click here on the inside rail, edit path once again. We'll do this from the third floor view. And we will start with our line tool. We'll get an endpoint snap and just stretch out and type in 10. And then we'll click here again. It won't just do a chain of lines like it does when you're doing a wall or something like that. So just be aware of that. And then I'll extend all the way over to where it snaps to the uh, alignment point with the wall. And I'll draw this back nine millimeters again, leaving that gap. And then now that I've finished that, you can see if I go back to the 3D view, I've left that one little gap there so that when this element copies up, uh, I'll get a nice flush condition. So last little steps, I just need to click on this, edit the path. I'll go to my main floor view for editing this one. And then just add that one, making sure I'm in the right spot. 
I'll add that little one millimeter extension just by typing in one and hitting enter. And you can see that little bit of an extension there. I'll click on the green check. And now that's what I've added with that little extra bit. So this should all now be set up for doing a copy. So we'll kind of finish off this segment of the tutorial, this video, by just doing the copy step. And then we'll check to make sure that everything's properly uh, resolved. So to do that, I'm just going to make sure that I copy everything by going to a wireframe view and then doing a big selection box around everything, rails, floors, and rails, uh, and uh, stairs. And then I'm going to hit Control C to copy to the clipboard. And I'm going to use the paste align to selected levels. If this happens to be gray when you click on it, don't worry. Uh, it will allow you to select align to selected levels. And then I'm just going to choose the third floor, click OK. And then I'm going to switch this back here to a shaded view. And let's see how we did. Good. So there's the proper transition. No gaps or overlaps from three as it extends up to four. And then we just want to check to see is we've got the same condition down here as we're moving from one to or two to three. Good. Okay. So there we go. We've got the extensions. We've got the proper wrap. We've eliminated the gaps and the overlaps. So everything's now in the proper position. Uh, we've got a set of stairs and rails now that extend all the way up from first to, if we go to a transparent view here, all the way up to the fifth floor. So the last step in the last video, we'll just look at how we can finish this off by adding the extra height to the walls here. Of course, we do have this condition down here at the bottom that we have to fix. We'll get to that next and we'll do that in the next video.